All right, we are live. Good morning, THP Online community. This is Dallas here. I'm so glad to have you guys here with us for day one of our Passion Week Facebook Live prayer meetings. Hope you're all having a fantastic morning. I have my cup of coffee that I'm drinking this morning. And yes, it, it tastes good. Good morning, Shannon Rosales. Welcome. You got Marlene Rice, Jaron Hall. What's going on? Good morning. Good morning. Come on in, guys. Celeste, Dana Van Noppen. Good morning, Dane. Is your crew awake? <laughs> so for those of you who are joining us later on the replay, I want to encourage you to hang out, continue watching this, continue to uh, listen. And um, we're going to be doing some several things today. First off, we're going to do a quick little devotional about something that takes place during the life of Jesus, specifically on the Monday of Passion Week, the week leading to, well, the cross. At the same time, we're going to be doing some prayer uh, requests. So if you have any prayer requests that you want us to pray over, leave them in the chat. We will be praying over them. We have a moderator who's going to be on uh, checking these things. So I don't miss any of your prayer requests because we want to honor your time. I want to pray with you about whatever's going on in your life. So, yeah, that's what we're doing today. But, again, if you're on the replay, keep watching, hang out, leave comments in the chat. Uh, as it goes by, if you want to leave comments in the chat, if you have a prayer request, we are going to pray with you guys about whatever's going on in your life. And again, if you have praise reports, maybe there's something going on in your life that um, God has moved powerfully through these Facebook lives for you. Guys, let us know. We want to rejoice with you. We want to celebrate with you what God is doing in your life. <laughs> Let's see here. Chance says, good morning. Celeste says, good morning. Um, Marlene says, good morning. Pastor Scott's in the chat. Good morning, Pastor Scott. Matthew Edwards, good morning, my brother. So glad to see everybody jumping in, joining us. We're going to hang out just for a few more minutes while I wait for more people to join us so we can get this party started correctly. <laughs> so I'm just going to share this out real quick to my personal Facebook page. I want to encourage you while I do this, I want to encourage you share this out on your personal Facebook page. Uh, if you got friends, tag them in the comment and uh, invite them to come take part in this. Jenny Marino, good morning. Marino family as a whole, good morning. Love you guys. Hope you're all doing well. Let's see here. Again, I'm going to share this on our personal Facebook page because, again, I'm, I want to invite people to this because I think this is going to be encouraging to them. I'm going to share this on a THP online community, one of the greatest online communities on Facebook. THP online community, check that out. Da -da 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 -da. Boom, done. All right, sweet. Let's get that window out of my way. So I'm pretty excited about today. I, I got to do something yesterday. Uh, I had the opportunity of being in a community group of individuals who are amazing, blessed old saints. Uh, Christy Edwards, hello, good morning. Um, but um, we have a community group that meets at our church, and these are mostly older individuals, and uh, they've been involved in the church for many, many years, and um, some of them <laughs> have literally seen our church built. And uh, it was a great time. It was a blessing to hang out with them last night and, and fellowship with them. We had some amazing peach cobbler, bless the Lord, amen, and uh, all these great things. Well, what was interesting about it was I realized that most of these individuals don't have Facebook. They're not going to be on Facebook. They're not sure what Facebook is. So I went ahead and did today's teaching for them last night. So they already have this ahead of time. So I'm pretty, and they seem to enjoy it. So hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoy this teaching today too. Cody Bar Barbier, what's going on, man? Good morning, brother. Glad to see you. Drink some more coffee. Oh, man. Like I said, we're going to be getting started up here just a brief minute. Again, I want to encourage you guys, if you have any prayer requests, leave them in the chat. We're going to be praying for them at the end of the teaching time frame of this uh, this morning together. And if you have any praise reports, feel free to message us at mediahub at thpshreeport.com. And we will love to celebrate with you guys about what's going on in your life, especially if there's something that's happened um, in your life through this event here. Okay. Cody says, morning, brother, coming in fro, fro, coming in fro. You're growing a fro? That's interesting, Cody. I didn't know you could grow a fro. Oh, you're coming from Kenya. Kenya, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, we just made it international here. Cody, so glad to have you here, brother. Marlene Rice, keep my parents in your prayers. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to pray for them at the end of this thing here. Uh, <laughs> Celeste goes, wow, hashtag uh, dedicated Cody. All right, cool beans. All right, we're going to get started with the teaching portion of today's 
uh, Facebook Live, Passion Week Morning Prayer. I want to encourage you, grab your Bibles. I got a couple. It doesn't matter which version you have. Uh, this is my travel Bible. I used this when I went to the Philippines because uh, weight restrictions. <laughs> so, uh, But we're going to be in Matthew chapter uh, 21. We're going to be in verses 12 and 13. I actually have it off my screen here, so I'm going to be reading out of off my screen for a little bit. And um, this, again, this is leading up to the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Pastor Matt spoke a little bit on this passage earlier. Uh, he talked about the triumphant, triumphant entry of Jesus walking into the city. Palm Sunday, people laying down palm branches, celebrating, singing out, Hosanna, Hosanna. And people are celebrating and people going, who is this? And the crowd screaming out, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. All right. So this is the situation that we have happening here. Good morning, Demerit. Glad to have you here. Now, uh, right away, we understand that these individuals don't know who Jesus is really. They don't have a full revelation of him as Messiah uh, because they say the prophet Jesus. They don't understand that Jesus is more than a prophet, but he is the Messiah coming into the city. So this now leads us up to a very famous passage. I'm going to read it for you guys. Verse 12 through 13 says this. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned tables and money changers in the seats of those who sold pigeons. He said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. Wow, that's an encouraging verse, Dallas. Why are you reading this this morning? Well, there's some reasons for it, guys, and I'm going to walk you through this. First off, I want you to understand that while studying this verse, and I've read this verse several times, I've read the accompanying verses found in the Synoptic Gospels uh, several times, and I realized something this past time that I never, ever, ever, ever realized, ever realized in my life. In fact, I shared this thing that I never realized with the group of saints that were with me last night. And again, these are individuals that have been walking with the Lord longer than I'm breathing oxygen, and they've never heard this before. But what's interesting is when you look at this passage, you realize this is the second time Jesus has cleared the temple. Number two, guys, second time. I know because there's guys like, well, where's the whips, Dallas? So he's supposed to make cords of out, uh, whips out of cords, and he's supposed to be whipping these people. But that's not in this passage. And I know what you think. Well, maybe it's in the synoptics. Maybe maybe Mark records this. Maybe maybe Luke records this. No, he doesn't. In fact, that aspect of that story isn't found until the book of John in chapter two. The issue with that, with it being John chapter two, is the fact that that's the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He goes from the wedding at Cana and he goes straight to the temple during Passover, and he's clearing out the temple. Now, there's some people that have tried to cast a spurge on the scripture saying, well, look, here's examples of how the Bible's messed up and how it's wrong. Well, not really. If you study it out, if you look at the, the two uh, examples clearly and in its completeness, you realize that legitimately, two years prior to the crucifixion of Jesus, he went into the temple once before and he cleared the place out. And uh, again, we can, even if you are, you're not someone who necessarily believes that the um in our faith in, in jesus christ if you come back contextually we recognize the fact that john and matthew were both disciples of jesus they walked with jesus they were very close we would under we would know that you know they have intimate knowledge about the life of jesus and the chronological order that jesus lived his life so we can put some faith in that so again we have two different times that jesus cleared out the temple we're dealing with a second time closer to the end of his life. I need you to keep that in mind. This is the second time that he's done this. That's going to be very important down the road as we get into this devotional this morning. Okay, so why then? Why did Jesus do this? Why did he uh, clear out the temple? Well, the selling of livestock was not an uncommon event to take place in the temple. Rather, uh, it was a service to the people so that they could purchase what they needed to make the appropriate sacrifices while at the temple. So if Jesus' issue then wasn't with the provision of things needed for worship, what was his real issue? You get what I'm saying here, guys? Again, this was a common thing. This was a service to the people. you got to think about this. People are traveling for days at a time to go to the temple to worship God, to worship Yahweh, and they had to bring certain items. They had to bring wheat. They had to bring an ox. They had to bring a pigeon. They had to bring several things to worship God, to lay down the sacrifice for their sins, and all these other things. 
It's hard to carry all that when you're traveling. And some of these individuals, they barely made it there themselves, much less carrying extra animals and extra things for sacrifices. Excuse me. So what the, the temple did what, was they're like, hey, we have oxen, we have wheat, we have pigeons, we have this, this, and this. Come to the temple and you can purchase what you need here so you can worship Yahweh. Great thing. This is actually a very positive thing. So if Jesus' issue wasn't with the provision, what's the, what's the issue? Well, many people have studied this out alongside with historical documentation. What they've discovered is that um, these individuals who are doing the selling, these individuals who are in the temple selling the, the pigeons and the doves and all those other things, uh, they're cheapskates. They are ripping people off. you got to realize people are coming from miles around. They have different uh, coinage. They have um, different um, currency, if you will. I mean, example over here. Where is it? Right here, I have $2 in Hong Kong money. I have no idea what this is in American cash, but it's not $2. Right here, this is 10 pesos from the Philippines. This right here is like... 25 cents in American funds, all right? So you understand currency changes take place. What was happening is people were going to the temple, and some of them maybe not educated, some of them not understand what's going on, and they're changing up the currency so they can purchase what they need to. And then the, on top of that, the, these individuals are applying a temple tax, and they're ripping people off. They're stealing money from these individuals. And they are literally extorting these people and making them pay exuberant prices for things that they needed to worship Yahweh. So what happened was these individuals who Jesus is mad at, who Jesus is getting on to, they have allowed greed and the love of money to become the center of their lives while they stand in the courts of God's house. That is what Jesus is getting angry at. That's what Jesus is getting frustrated with, and he's looking at this picture. So this becomes a lot clearer, though, this understanding of what's actually why he's angry becomes a lot clearer. When we look at the words of Jesus, his response, my house shall be called a house of prayer, is actually taken from Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. If you're taking notes, again, that's Isaiah 56, verse 7, which is a passage about God's grace for the Gentiles. It's for the grace for the foreigner who comes into the country and they have decided to align themselves with Yahweh. And so he's like, hey, come on in. I have my house is a house of prayer. I will be a sanctuary for you. I will be a place to, to raise you up for you to have rest. And so that's where that first aspect comes in. My house should be called a house of prayer. The second part, though, of that phrasing that Jesus has there. Let me, let me look at that again. He says, my house should be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of robbers. That vocabulary, a den of robbers, comes from a very different place in the scriptures. It's actually, the phrase comes from Jeremiah chapter 7, where the Lord is actually rebuking his people for living in sin, for worshiping other gods. Yet still, they're coming to the temple declaring that they are God's delivered people. That is the context of what's happening in Jeremiah chapter 7. And in the midst of it, God is declaring to the people, he's saying, you have turned my house into a den of robbers. So, so put this in together. Put all this, all this information I just gave you guys together, right? You have individuals who have turned the, um, the, the courts of God's house, the temple, into a place where they are ripping people off. They have elevated uh, greed and money and all these other things above the oracles of God, above the worship of God even. And yet they're declaring that they're worshiping him. They're honoring him with what he has. I want you guys to put all that together in your head. So, again, Jesus' actions here weren't just about him, about them selling things. It wasn't like, hey, they're selling us Snickers. That wasn't the problem. What he sees are people who know the expectations of God, have been taught his expectations, and have already been warned by about this behavior once. Remember what I said at the beginning? This is the second time Jesus cleared out the temple. He's already warned them once that this is inappropriate. Uh, things are taking place. And yet, they continue in sinful behavior while supposedly continuing to worship God, while supposedly leading others in the worship of God. 
this is the scene that we have here. This is what's happening on Jesus' Monday. He's coming to the temple, to the house of his father, and he sees people taking advantage of other people who are here to honor his father, people who are here to, to worship his father, and they are being torn apart because of some individuals. Now, there's, some, there's a lot more to this story. There's a lot more to unpack in this. This is taking place in the courtyard for, specifically designed for Gentiles. And there's a whole lot happening here, but we're not going to get into it. But I do want to pan out and look at what's happening kind of nationwide at the point. Uh, this, of course, is the week prior to Jesus' crucifixion, which fell during Passover. While and during this time frame, many of the houses are actually cleaning out all of the leaven out of their household or all the yeast because they know that the yeast or the leaven that's in the house will actually spoil the matzah, the, the, the food that they're making um, in honor and celebration of God's provision. The things that these are, again, the, the, the meal isn't just like, hey, we're eating food, but it's actually an act of worship to do this. It's actually an act of worship to sit down at the table and, and walk through the Seder all together. And so they clear out all the yeast, they clear out all the leaven, because they're not going to ruin the worship of Yahweh in their household. So during this time frame, while people are clearing out their house, Jesus is clearing out his father's house of things that are going to ruin the true worship of God. These people knew that they were being ripped off by these merchants, and yet some of them still took part in it. They would come in, they knew they were being ripped off, they're like, oh man. Fine, I'll pay your temple tax. Fine, I know that you are ripping me off. But I'm going to do this because I'm going to worship Yahweh. But then there were some who walked into a situation and they go, I can't afford to worship Yahweh. I can't afford to give my all to God. And it's because these individuals here are standing between me and him, putting these unfair restrictions on me and putting these inappropriate things that, again that are not lawful they're not honest and so they walk away these guys who are selling the stuff in the temple have literally ruined the worship of god they have become the yeast the, the, the leaven in the temple and jesus is hearing is like look it's time to clear this out this needs to go away so what's our challenge for us this week what's our challenge for us today as we move forward again we have we're doing this every single day this week, guys. We're going to be praying together. We're going to be worshiping together uh, through the reading of, of God's word, through the study of it, and letting it impact us. But for today, what is our, our challenge? Well, our challenge is this. I want to encourage all of us, you, me, everyone, much like the challenge that Matt presented to us last night uh, in our services yesterday morning, rather, let us examine our hearts and our lives. If there's anything standing between us and God, uh, that may spoil his, the worship that he deserves, we need to clean ourselves of that. We need to repent of those things. Now, of course, repentance, sometimes I think that we just throw that word around. We don't really understand what it means. Repentance means this. Here's the action. I'm going to stop doing the action. I'm going to apologize for doing the action. I'm going to do the opposite action. Does that make sense, guys? This is what we're going to be doing. So again, if you are, I want you to examine your lives. I want you to uh, examine your who you are and what's happening. And if there's something inside of you that has been ruining the worship of God, that is sinful, it's time to clean it out. I need you to repent of that. I will do the same thing, all right? At the same time, I want us to be contemplative and ask the Lord, have we become a stumbling block for others? Have we allowed ourselves to become like those merchants who stood in the temple of God and, and maybe we've done some inappropriate practices and those things have become a stumbling block for people who are coming to the Lord? If that's the case, again, we need to repent. And actually, I'll tell you this, Matthew teaches that we should go out of our way to the person who's been offended and we should try our best to bring repairs to that relationship. We should repent and go, hey, look, I apologize for that. All right, so that's what we're going to be kind of starting off the prayer for. If you have other prayer requests, if there's something you want us to pray for this morning, leave it in the chat. We're going to pray over those things right now and right here. I know earlier we had a prayer request from Marlene. Uh, Celeste is in the chat right now. She says, we'll be praying at the end of this devotion. Please drop a comment in the chat, and we will pray for you, uh, pray for your prayer request. Uh, also, if 
uh, you have any testimonies about what's happening in your life this week, maybe God has really ministered to you through uh, this devotion, or maybe some of the other devotions we have that are coming out all week long, through the prayer times that are happening all week long, uh, we want to hear about it, guys. Message us. You can send us a, a direct message here on Facebook. You can send us a direct message on most of our social media, or you can email us, mediahub at thpshreport.com. Again, I want to encourage you guys, and while I'm waiting for some prayer requests to come in, good morning, Brenda Van, uh, Van Diemen. <laughs> good morning, Sierra. I like how people are jumping in towards the end of the devotional aspect, but you're here just in time for our prayer time. But again, I want to encourage you guys, that if uh, um, you're watching this on the replay, leave comments. Let us know what you need us to pray for. If you're watching this on the version, it's going to be on YouTube later. Uh, leave comments and message us. Let us know what we can pray for you about. Again, this is your time to leave comments and let us pray over you. Uh, again, I know we're going to be praying for Marlene's parents, her family. Uh, I like to call them Aunt Cookie, Uncle Rachel. Uh, yep, Rachel and Aunt Cookie. Uh, let's see here. Jim Marino, which is probably Mateo. Honestly, good word, bro. Appreciate it, Matt. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to start praying into this word, and I'm going to pray for Cookie and Rachel. And I want to encourage you guys, again, if you have any prayer requests, leave them in the chat. We're going to pray together. I want to encourage you guys to pray along with me as we do this. Good morning, Janet. We're praying right now. If you want to leave comments, if you want to leave a prayer request, leave them. Drink some coffee. All right. Well, let's pray, guys. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence and your grace. We thank you that we can worship you in spirit and truth. I thank you that in Christ we have the freedom to worship you honestly and correctly. But Lord, I thank you, Lord, that freedom doesn't mean we get to do whatever we want to do. That freedom doesn't mean that we can just lose our minds. At the same time, that freedom doesn't mean we walk this tightrope that is restrictive and has bound us to the law. But that freedom means there's a path for us to walk. And Lord, as we walk down this path, I pray that if there's anything inside of us, anything inside of me, Lord, that is sitting between me and worshiping you in spirit and truth, Lord, remove it. I repent of those things. Reveal to me of the things that I've been struggling with. Reveal to me those things that have, um, that have caused me to stumble, that have kept me from having true relationship with you in any way. And for anybody in the chat, Lord, that, or anybody who's watching this later, that they're struggling at the same time, Lord, I pray that you open up their hearts, open up their minds, and give them revelation of those things so that they can remove it. Lord, just like the, the Jews, when they were removed the leaven from their houses in preparation of, of worship of Yahweh, Lord, I pray that you begin to help them remove the leaven from their own lives, from their hearts, from the things that are that their lives that are around them, Lord. At the same time, Lord, I pray that if I have been a stumbling block for anybody at any point in time, I pray for everyone in this, in this who's watching this, Lord, that they've been a stumbling block for anybody, that they've become like the merchants at any point in time, Lord, that they repent of those things, Lord, that they're the typical Sunday morning Christian who goes to the um, goes to the restaurant after church, and Lord, they're saying hallelujah, but at the same time, they're cursing their waitress and their waiters. Lord, I pray that they repent. Lord, I pray that I repent of those things that I've done that have been a stumbling block for others. Lord, that we can be a light to the lost, so we can be people who who draw you them to draw other people to you, Father. God, we also pray for for Rachel and for Cookie Rice, Lord. We know that they have been uh, they've been going through it recently, Lord. They've been sick, they've had injuries, and they're recovering, and it's a slow recovery process for them, Lord. But we thank you, Lord, that you are a healer. We thank you, Lord, that you are a God who restores us completely and holy and so i gotta pray that for Rachel and, and cookie lord that you make them whole god mend them together mend their the the um the bruised muscle mend the um every aspect of their bodies god make them whole in the name of jesus amen all right is there any other prayer requests drop in guys we i, I can stick around for believe me we're, we're, we're planning to be here until 6 45 any prayer requests drop them in the chat let us know carlos says best way to start the a.m I'm glad to hear that, Carlos. I'm glad you enjoyed this. Because we're doing this all week. All week, ladies and gentlemen. I think Pastor Matt's going to be in here tomorrow morning uh, doing this, and I'm excited to hear that. Matt always brings a great word. Uh, if you want to hear the message Matt brought last week, uh, it will be on our podcast later this week, if, as long as everything went well. 
And so uh, I'm going to be checking that out and record and editing the podcast today and putting that up on our, our website. It's going to be at thpshreport.com. It's going to be here on Facebook. It's going to be on YouTube. If you, if you didn't know, we have a YouTube channel, YouTube. Um, just type in, uh, what is it? THP Media Productions, and you pull up our YouTube channel pretty quickly. All right. So, yeah. Any other prayer requests? Again, I, it's, guys, I'm sticking around. 645 is when we're killing this thing. So, I'd love to pray for you guys. Demera goes, a smooth week and a productive week at work. All right. Let's pray for that, Demera. Lord, I thank you for Demera. We thank you, Lord, for what she does. We thank you that she takes... Um, a lot of time, a lot of effort to love on people and to minister to them through her job where she's dealing with people who are literally broken. But Lord, I pray for her, for her peace in her spirit, peace in her mind, Lord, for her, her to have a smooth and productive, productive week at her job. I pray, Lord, that as she uh, steps into situations maybe that are more chaotic than she expected, Lord, that because she's carrying your presence, because she's an agent of change for you, Lord, that these things will be turned around, that when she enters the room, that people will take notice, not of her necessarily, Lord, but of you, of your light, of your spirit resting inside of Demera. And at that same point, Lord, I pray for all of us, Lord, as we go to work this week, Lord, that I pray for smoothness this week. Uh, it's been told to me many times, smooth is fast. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that we are smooth with what we take care of this week. Lord, we're productive day, every moment of the day that we are productive and honoring with what you have for us. Sierra says, uh, we are preparing for field day this whole week, so pray that the kids would have fun and peaceful while doing it. Also, that everyone would stay safe learning the games this week and the day of the field. I'm sorry, and the day of the field day. Okay, cool. We can pray for that, absolutely. So before I pray for that, I'm just going to, Funny story, several years ago, we had the opportunity to serve at field day at Southern Hills Elementary, and I was with a couple of our, our team, and we're sitting there, we're working a booth, uh, we're doing some nachos, and all of a sudden, it was quiet. Kids are out there playing, they're having fun, all of a sudden, it was quiet, we're like, what's going on? And then we heard this rumble. I mean, the ground shook, guys, and uh, so our team and I, we looked up, and we saw an army of kids rushing towards us to get nachos scared some of us it was quite interesting so field day tends to be a little wild and so i'm definitely gonna be praying into this situation for you sierra um lord we thank you so much for the influence sierra has that she's a light in the world and lord that um on the campus that she's at lord lord that she's fulfilling her role as a ambassador of christ and lord that she's speaking life to these kids she's loving on these kids some of these kids who Lord, the only time they are told that they're loved is when Sierra says, hey, I love you in her class time. Even if it's out of frustration sometimes, she's showing love to these kids day in and day out. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that as she does that and she encourages these kids, she encourages the other teachers, Lord, that um, they will be productive in their preparation for field day. Lord, as they get the games ready, as they get the field ready, they get all the concession stand stuff ready to go. And Lord, that the actual day of the event will be peaceful. The actual day of the event will be fun and encouraging to these kids. There will be life. Lord, I pray that there will be moments throughout the entire day on field day that these kids look back and they go, wow, this was a great day. They may for a moment this day, field day becomes a moment of change for them because there will become a moment of peace they can grab hold and go, this is peace. And they'll understand that God loves them and he cares about them through this moment. So Lord, I pray, Lord, that just for Sierra, Lord, you give her wisdom and grace throughout this entire week as they, pray, as they prepare for this event. Jim Marino, uh, possibly Matt Marino also, pray that Resurrection Sunday invites... Uh, the Resurrection Sunday invites to THP hit their mark. Word. We can pray for that. Absolutely. For those of you who didn't know, we have we made several like ticket invites for people to come to church on Sunday morning. And uh, guys, we're, 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 Pastor Scott's bringing a great word. It's called resurrecting peace. And that's exactly what God does. When Jesus was resurrected, there was a new peace that was found on earth. The Christ brings the ability for us to have true peace. And I'm super excited to hear this word. Uh, this Sunday morning. So I want to encourage you guys, uh, maybe uh, if you don't have a home church and somehow somebody has like linked you to this page, um, you're welcome to join us. 8957 Kingston Road, Shreveport, Louisiana. And hey, uh, if you are in the Shreveport area, if you're one of our member of our THP family, 
uh, we have a pretty good stack, I believe, still at the church of tickets. So if you're like, hey, I'm, I need some tickets, guys. I need to invite some people. Stop by the church all week long from like 9 o'clock to 4.30. We have the tickets. We'll be happy to give them to you, and you can pass them out to as many people as you can. Hey, do me a favor, though. Try to invite people who don't go to the church, okay? Try to go out of your way to invite people who don't go to church and uh, let them come be part of what's happening. Let them hear the Word of God because lives can be changed. It's an opportunity for people to have a life, have their lives changed. We've seen it happen several times before. Our own pastor, Scott Etheridge, he, uh, his life was transformed and changed radically on an Easter Sunday. So I want to encourage you guys, invite somebody who you know needs a life change this Sunday and come pick up some of these tickets. So let's pray into that. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for um, what's happening this Sunday. Lord, that we're taking time you know, we're taking time out of our out of the out of the year to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We thank you that we're taking time to celebrate the day that hope was restored on earth, Lord. The day that the Son was resurrected and, and came to the right hand of the Father. We're we're celebrating these things, Lord. But Lord, we pray that we have a moment of clarity in throughout this. Lord, I pray that um, you direct us as we invite individuals. God, I pray for divine uh, appointments. or that people we haven't seen in months, years, decades for some people, or that we bump into them and that you will quicken our spirit that this is an opportunity, this is a divine opportunity you've given us to invite them to be part of what's happening. Not that coming to the church is what's going to change their lives. Not that um, the just necessarily the word will change their lives, but Lord, that you operating through all these aspects, operating through the, the individuals who's doing the invite, operating through the word that's going to be given, operating through the music that's going to be played that morning, operating through every aspect of the process that these individuals will experience the presence of God and that they will say, hey, I need to make a change. I need to clear out the leaven in my life. I need to clear out the junk that's in me because I need to worship Yahweh. I need to worship Jesus Christ. I need a Savior. And so, Lord, I pray, Lord, that this Sunday we experience that, we see this, we see people coming to you in droves, Lord, whether it's at the healing place, whether it's at any other church in Shreveport, Lord, we just pray for revival to spark this Sunday morning, Lord. Jaron Hall says, uh, pray that I would uh, find the teaching job that God has for me. Absolutely. Uh, be praying for our families this week, especially for Noah. Absolutely, we can do that. Um, getting messages. <laughs> All right, cool means. All right, so Lord, we thank you so much for Jared. I thank you, Lord, for this amazing young man, this uh, our youth leader at our church, this man who's walking in your presence every day, this young man who speaks life to people and is just so encouraging to others. And God, I pray, Lord, that you give Jared wisdom. I pray, Lord, that you give him understanding about where he should go. God, I pray, Lord. Um, well, I don't pray for open doors. Well, I pray for wisdom on which doors to knock on. I pray for wisdom to, to go to the door that you have for him, to put the effort into it for him to knock on it and let it open up, swing wide open for him, Lord. Let him understand where he's supposed to go and let him walk that out. We thank you, Lord, that you have, you're divinely placing him in places, yes, but Lord, that you have put a, you have purposed him into, as a man of action to walk these things out and to do these things. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you are going to provide for him in this situation. Lord, we pray for uh, our family, Lord. They've gone through a loss recently. And, Lord, I pray for peace in our family. I pray for Noah, who has lost his, uh, he's lost his brother. God, I pray for peace in him as he celebrates for the first time a, a birthday without his brother with him. So, Lord, I pray for uh, this young man who maybe doesn't quite understand everything, but he understands. He understands that his brother is with you in heaven. Lord, I pray for peace in him. Lord, I pray, Lord, that this is that this day is, he understands it's still a celebration, and we honor that, Father God. Amanda Gilchrist, pray for the Braley kidney, uh, pray for Braley's kidneys uh, to function properly. Absolutely, Lord, we thank you for this young lady, Braley, God. We thank you, Lord, that we have seen and heard through our THB Online community about the miracles are taking place every step of the way, every moment, Lord. You've been stepping in, you've bring, been bringing healing, you've been bringing hope, and so, Lord, we pray right now that you continue to do the miracle in her body, or that you bring healing to her kidneys, or that they function properly, that they are restored completely, Lord. 
reach down and touch this young lady. But we thank you, Lord, that every step of the process, Lord, that there are, these are moments of praise. These are moments of worship that we can give to you, Lord, because you are restoring her body. You're restoring her, making her whole. Lord, this is becoming a testimony of your goodness. This is becoming a testimony of your grace. And so, Lord, we pray for more opportunities to praise you, more opportunities to give you uh, worship, Lord, as you do a miracle in her body. Amen. Cool beans. All right. So does anybody have any more prayer requests? And we're, we can shut this down. If uh, nobody does, again, if you're watching this on the replay, hey, do me a favor and leave comments. Let us know. If you, we will pray for these. We're going to pray for them all week long. If you have any praise reports, again, you can message us directly. You can email us at mediahub at thpshreveport.com. Uh, we just want to celebrate with you guys. I also want to encourage you. Again, a couple less announcements while we'll some people put more uh, stuff in the chat if you need any prayer requests. Um, don't forget that if you're in the THB Shreveport area, every Wednesday we have Grow You. Opportunities for growth, opportunities to discover, opportunities to walk in what God has called you to be. And uh, we have classes for every age range from tiny to uh, not so tiny. <laughs> and so uh, but we have our Discover 2 class for the blue group that's going to be meeting this, this uh, week. We also have Follow the Cloud which has been really awesome. I've been hearing great testimonies of what God's doing through people's lives in that class. And so I want to encourage you guys, if you're in the Shreveport area, come hang out, 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time at our church, 8957 Kingston Road. All right. Well, I think that's it. I don't think anybody's dropping any more chats. That's all right. So I'm going to go eat breakfast. So you guys have a great day. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. Pastor Matt's going to be bringing you guys a great word.